can speak about the schedule at sidebar. That's not a problem. What do you recall about that 
Uh, waking up in the middle of the night, knocking on my mom's door, asking if she alright. Like every night, you know, wake up to hear thumps in the night, boom boom. Uh, only other person in the house is my mom and Charles, so knock on the door, and, you know, everybody's alright. This was like every night. Uh, I haven't seen her. I haven't seen him on many occasions. Uh, disrespect her. Talk to her. Uh, I recall one time he chased or he ran across the field. To think, try to take my little sister. Something. But uh, yeah, he was definitely, definitely vibe. Did you observe any physical abuse or you just heard it? Visually, the only thing I can remember is him grabbing on her, pushing on her. Uh, as far as I'm actually swinging, no, I don't know. I mean, all I recall from that was bruises. Wait, you didn't observe bruises? Yes. Was there mental abuse as well? Yes. Uh, what type? Uh, I don't know how many times out of the week he'll make a cry for what I had no idea at the time. Was there an incident in a blue vehicle? Yes. What was that? Um, I think that's when she had a Ford Focus. And uh, I remember just us in the car. I want to say we was going to his house. Uh, me, my little brother, Charles, my mom. I can't remember if this was before or after Lex. But um, we was in the vehicle. Started off going to Steve and they got to talking about something. And all I remember him saying is, I kill us all right now. Took her off down the road. Wide open. How fast did he go? Uh, he had to be doing the dash. At least, however fast that car could go. Probably wasn't more than about 85, 90 miles an hour. Run through stop sign? Yes. Was he saying anything during that time? I can't recall if he was. Uh, like I said, I remember him saying something before he actually took off. Sophomore year, around up in that time. So a couple, two to three years? Yeah. yeah. And during that time, you were living mostly then with dad. Right. And ultimately, you did come back to mom's house for the yes. school year. Yeah. Do you remember mom being pregnant in 1998? Yes. What do you remember about that? Uh, just our belly getting big. Fixing up the room. What uh, room is that? The room that she had when she came home, uh, which was the room right across from our room, me and my brother's room. And uh, I remember them getting it painted, uh, putting up a border, or trying to put up a border around the top of the room. Uh, 
she would definitely be with her. Uh, just a whole lot of a whole lot of times you've seen them, you've seen them together. So I felt like it was a pretty good relationship. Was Alexis a respectful child? Oh yeah. Did she show manners? Yes. How far are you in Virginia from Carlton County, South Carolina? Seven and a half, eight hours. That's a pretty good drive. Yes. And tell us your relationship between you and your mother. Oh, well, that's my lovely lady. Um, I can call her and talk to her about anything, ask her anything. Uh, we used to piggy bank off each other a whole lot, you know. Uh, I'm going to come up a couple dollars short. She'll let me hold a couple dollars and vice versa, you know. We, we, just, we just always looked out for each other since day one. I mean, you know, it's expected of a parent to look out for their child like that. But when you, as a child, that you, you want to be the one that can give it back. And before any other boyfriends or any of that, I remember her and a couple more of my cousins telling me I was the man of the house, and it just pretty much stuck with me. So we we have a, a great, great relationship. How often did you speak to her prior to her incarceration? Um, every day. Every day on my way to work. Because I sleep until it's time for me to go to work. And then I get up, get on the road, call her. And we'll talk and talk until it's time for me to clock in. Sure. Any things that you guys talk about every day? Uh, just life. Uh, family issues. Me, relationship issues, uh, advice, um, stuff like that. And how often did you have to see your mother living seven and a half, eight hours away? Not much. Um, majority will probably be in the summertime or a special occasion. Um, she used to come and get my daughter um, for one week every summer. And, uh, we'll spend a little bit of time then. And, and, and every so often I, I'll be able to make a trip down there to see her as well. Uh, so I'll say three, maybe four times a, a year maybe. Can you mention your daughter? How old is she? Nine. When did she start spending summers with grandma? Uh, summer with grandma? Probably as soon as she started walking. Maybe before that. It was, you know, it's been going on for quite some time. Wait. Has she been asking about her summer vacation? Yes. Uh, she just recently asked me about Granny and when she's going to see her. Uh, last week? Last week. What have you told her about that? Uh, I try to blow it off as much as possible, but uh, right now I just tell her that Granny's, Granny's pretty busy right now. Uh, I'll let you know when you can get down there. Um, anytime my mom calls, if she's around, I, I, I give her the phone and ask me to talk to her, you know, just so she can hear her voice. How would you describe Gloria as a great Great. Great. Um, My daughter loves coming to see her granny. She loves any time she get to see her. It's just, 
She know Granny gonna take her, do this, that, and the third. Uh, and she has a great time with her. She loves when all the grandkids are together because she tell them all the time, I'm the oldest and the greatest. <laughs> Do you think she's taught your daughter anything? Yeah, a whole lot. Like what? Um, <clears throat> just being, just, just to have tough skin. Uh, you know, with her being a young lady and everything, uh, my mom, she has pretty tough skin to be a single mom. And um, she's definitely picking up habits. She uh, she don't let things get to her like she used to. So. How would you describe the family dynamic? Your family dynamic. Like my own family. Oh, uh, everybody's loving, caring. Um, everybody looks out for one another. It's just a, uh, um, it's a real strong family. Growing up, did you get to spend a lot of time with your grandparents? Yes. Do they in fact babysit you a lot? Yes. Still get together on holidays when you can? Yes. I gotta get down there. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, I just had to get, I had to get to South Carolina. I'm hoping that she would still be there. When you say she, you mean my mom? Yeah. Did it uh, seem surprising to you? Well, I guess it was surprising that she had just called me the night before and told me that she, you know, did something bad, uh, made a mistake. And I, and I couldn't really talk to her because I work at night. And uh, so I told her I'd call her back. And she might got the phone call the next day. She had got, she had been locked up. And, uh, first thing I had to do was hop on the road, right after work, and just, you know, go. And I, I don't, I remember being asleep for probably an hour and a half, two hours, before I got the phone call that she had been arrested and I just got on the road and left. Does this describe your mom as a person? A uh, great, wonderful, beautiful person inside and out. Uh, she's another one that has an electric smile. Uh, whether you're having a good day or a bad day, her smile will light you up. And uh, she's, a, she's a great person. All the way around, mother, wife, all around person. And you said uh, the immediate reaction was, I just need to get to my family, I need to get to my yes. mom. After that wore off, what have your thoughts been on this? Is she okay? Uh, can she come home? Yeah, I just really wanted to make sure she was okay. How has your life changed over the last 16 months during Mom's incarceration? Uh, it's been a bit of a struggle. Um, it's 
especially with the summertime approaching. Not knowing that old man, I'm going to see her in South Carolina, you know, at her house. I don't know when the next time I'm going to see her. Uh, granted, I try to get down here to Jacksonville as much as possible since she's been here to see her. Um, I try to keep money on my phone so, I, so when she calls, I can talk. Like your life is on pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Why is that? I, I don't have. It, it's it's hard trying to squeeze a whole week into fifteen minutes, which is all the time that they give you for a phone call. Um, from the jail. From the jail. It, it, you, know, you never know what you have until it's gone. And I just, it's hard, it's hard for me to go on day to day knowing that she's you know, incarcerated and I'm free. Every day I try to figure out, well, is there anything I can do? You know, And knowing all that you do now, listening to all the testimony today, um, are you mad at mother? No. No. I'm not mad at my mother. I'm not mad at my only family. I'm not mad at the Aiken family. I, I'm, my mother, I know, as well as a whole lot of other people know, she is a wonderful person. Who made a mistake? He caught up with her. And when she's ultimately released, are you still going to be part of her support system? Most definitely. Is there anything else that you believe the court should know about your mom before her release happens? Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody else said everything that I was going to say. So, so she is a great person. I, I, I asked for as much land as you can possibly get. Thank you, well, I just wanted to clarify one issue that's never been talked about. You notice that, um, that your mom was pregnant. Um, how old were you when, you, when she was pregnant, allegedly, with uh, Alexis? About 10 or 11. Do you remember, do you have enough of a memory of how pregnant she was? Like, was she at the point where she looked like she was an out to give birth? Uh... Maybe. I mean, everything looked big at 11, so I don't know. <laughs> um, do you ever remember anyone talking about it, like your dad or Mr. Mando or anyone else talking about the fact that she never got fully pregnant? You know what I'm saying? Like, in other words, no one ever got to the point. If she was pregnant, what happened to the baby? You understand what I'm saying? Because she obviously did not give birth to Alexis. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. I don't remember that at all. So there was no discussion in the family about that from anyone. No. Okay. That's all that was done. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Any further questions? And there you are. please speak with counsel at Sidebar about the schedule. Fifty-two. And when were you born? November 20th, 1965. And to whom? To Wilbert and Gloria Brown. Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. To William, I mean, excuse me, to Wilbert and Gloria Brown. 
Where were you born and raised? In New York City, New York. And did you spend time elsewhere while you were growing up? Yes, ma'am, in uh, Ruffin, South Carolina. Describe Ruffin. Well, I spent the summers there with my grandparents, uh, which is my mother's uh, family. And uh, it was a good childhood, uh, out, outdoors. Um, being from New York, it was different, definitely. Uh, How so? Well, because I was used to the city, um, and uh, it was real country. I felt like the bugs were bigger, it was hotter there, and you know, it was the city. I mean, excuse me, it was the country. And how would you describe your childhood? It was good. It really was. Um, I had lots of friends, girlfriends coming up, um, childhood friends that are still friends now, and uh, we had good times. How were your parents? My parents were good. They were good. They were good people. Um, they tried hard with me. I had stubbornness in me at times, but. You know, for the most part, they they were really good people, and uh, they worked hard. They showed me, you know, what it meant to to work and to build things and to take care of your family. Did they always provide you with food and shelter? Yes, always. How would you describe your personality? I love to laugh. I love to smile. Um, I'm a caring person. Um, I'm kind of those who are kind to me. And I try to treat people according to the way they treat me, I guess. And even if they don't treat me right, you know, I, I try to ignore that for whatever reason. Somebody might be having a bad day. You know, I still try to tr greet them the way I should. And growing up, did you attend school? Yes, I did. Did you ultimately get your GED? Yes, I did. How old were you at that time? I was 17. I was ready to get out of, and I graduated before my class. Well, I wanted to get, graduate before I did. Who is William Bolden? My first husband. How old were you when you married Mr. Bolden? 22. And did you have um, children from that union? Yes. Who were they? Uh, my firstborn was Andre Bolden, and um, my second and my youngest is Antoine Bolden. Did you ultimately graduate from Norfolk? No, I did not. Why is that? Well, I got pregnant with Andre, and I decided, you know, I would go ahead and take a leave of absence and raise him and at that time I just didn't go back. What did Mr. Bolden, William Bolden, do for a living? He was an officer in the military. Did that require moving a lot? Yes, it did. We moved, uh, we lived in Maryland, we lived in Virginia, we lived in Anniston, South Carolina, excuse me, Alliston, Anniston, Alabama. We were overseas in Korea as well. And were you often with the boys by yourself? Yes, ma'am. And ultimately, did you and Mr. Bolden divorce? Yes, we did. What was the custody arrangement? At the time, I had physical custody and we had visitation uh, set up for him and the boys. Yeah, so he would get, I would have the boys during the school season. He would get the boys in the, um, during the summer, and we would alternate on the holiday. Where did you go, where did you return after the divorce? To South Carolina. How did you get by as a single parent of two children? Well, with the support from my, my parents, they helped me out a lot with the boys, um, so I worked two jobs. And you were still able to manage to spend time with the kids? Yes, on my days off. And be involved in your community? Yes. 
Now as an adult, um, describe your relationship with your parents. Oh, I love them. I love them dearly. They're good people. Um, I think that old saying is how when they get older, you know, you just watch it more. So now it seems like the roles have reversed and now I'm trying to take care of them just like they took care of me. What type of things do you do with them? Well, um, sometimes I, me and mom, we go shopping, um, um, take her when she needs to go somewhere to doctor's appointments or same thing with dad, you know. And how often did you see them prior to your incarceration? I think during the week, um, I would see them maybe three times during the week, maybe more if they needed something. You know, sometimes mom said, well, I need, you know, you to come and dust or something. I'll go and dust or, you know, but maybe three times and then maybe on Sundays when it was time for church. And how often did you speak to them? Oh, I spoke to mom every day. Were they involved grandparents to your children? Oh, yes. Yeah, they really were. They were younger then. And um, when the kids were younger, uh, when they were playing sports and stuff, and um, they supported them a lot, They'd go to the games. And, uh, you know, like I said, mom and then was younger, she can get around, both of them get around better then, yeah. And Mrs. Williams, have you maintained steady employment throughout your life? Yes, I have. Where have you been employed? Well, um, before going back to school, it was several different places. Um, I worked at, well, for Holiday Inn Reservation Center. Um, I worked for the state, I worked for federal, and in between jobs. Did you also work at nursing home? Yes. Mm -hmm. What was that nursing home? Uh, Oakwood Nursing Home in Walterboro. And most recently, where were you employed? Uh, recently, I was at the VA. The Veterans Administration? Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, Veterans Administration. Okay. When were you hired there? Um, I believe it was 2016. Yeah. I think it was the end of 20, no, yeah, in early 2015. I mean, excuse me, 2016. And was part of that application process through the Department of Defense? Yes. And yes. does that require a background check? Yes, extensive background check. And why did you change jobs in 2016? Well, um, I worked at the Veteran Victory House nursing home um, in Walterboro where it was a good place. It was a very good place. I, I love those veterans. Um, but I just wanted, I wanted a change. I wanted to make more money. I wanted a little bit more growth um, with my degree. I wanted to move on. And you mentioned with your degree, Mrs. Williams, did you go back to school at some point in your life? Yes, when I was 48. You're 48 years old? Yes. Why did you, reside, why did you decide to return to school in your late 40s? Well, I knew you couldn't, in order for more growth, you had to, you had to market yourself. You had to, um, you had to be, well, you had to be able to, you know, compete with others that had degrees or more experience. I had experience, but I didn't have the degree. So uh, just wanted to be more marketable. And what degrees have you obtained? Well, I've gotten my AA um, in business and uh, BS in healthcare administration. And where did you go to school? Uh, Limestone College. And Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. Sure. When was that? In 98. Did you tell Mr. Manigo about your pregnancy? Yes, I did. And was he excited about that? Yes, he was. What did you believe that pregnancy would do for you guys? I thought that it would bring peace to us. 
I thought that, you know, this is what he needed. He wanted to have a baby. He asked me to have a baby, and I was like, I already got two kids. My kids were, I think, 10, 10 and um, 9, or 8 and 9 at the time. And uh, he's like, well, I don't have any children. Um, you know, I want a baby. And, you know, that's what's going to make me stable. That's what's going to help me. You know, so I believe that. I wanted to believe that. I thought that would help. And tell the court about your pregnancy in 1998. Oh, uh, it was. It started off to be a good pregnancy. It did, and um, I was, for the most part, healthy during, you know, during the early parts of it. But after the abuse and stuff, I think the stress from all of that just, just didn't let the pregnancy go on. What happened? I miscarried. Did you go to the doctor? Well, I called them. At the time, I didn't have insurance. And uh, it's like I told them I was bleeding. And it was like, oh, you that's normal for the first trimester. And um, I was like, well, are you sure? I'm, I'm bleeding a lot. And it's like, yeah, if it's still, if it keeps up, you know, then come in or go to the emergency room. And, you know, back then they didn't want to see you if you didn't have insurance, if you couldn't afford to pay. What happened to your body? Oh, gosh. I didn't realize that I had the miscarriage. As I thought, just as the doctor said, that I was spotting, that, you know, this was part of, you know, the process since I hadn't had a baby or been pregnant you know, in a long time that my body was trying to accustom, get accustomed to it. And um, my body continued to grow. My breasts continued to grow. And I assumed that everything was fine. So you felt like you were still pregnant? Yes, I did. But did you, in fact, miscarry? Yes, I did. And during this abusive relationship, were the uh, boys, Antoine and Andre, still living with you and Charles Manigo? Yes. And ultimately, were they taken away from you? Yes, they were. Who was that? Did they go to their father's house? Yes, they did. And when did that occur? <sighs> I guess it was sometime. It was... Sometime in uh, 98, I, can't, I think maybe the summer. No, it might have been before then. Spring or summer? Yeah, somewhere near. Of 1998? Yes. And was Mr. Manigo um, at home during that spring or summer of 1998? No, um, he got arrested. He was in jail. So he was in jail during that spring or summer of 1998 mm -hmm. as well? Yes. Were you still working during all that? Yes, I was. Where were you employed? Uh, well, at the reservation center in Charleston for Holiday Inn and also at the nursing home. On July 10th, 1998, what happened? I left work. I um, left work when I was working in Charleston. I was heading home. How far is Charleston from Ruffin, South Carolina? I'd say maybe 35, 35 minutes somewhere in there. Depends on who's driving. And what road would you take from Charleston to Ruffin? Well, I would, Charleston, you take 17, going back into Walterboro. And that's how you would normally get home? Yes. Mm -hmm. What did you do on July 10th, 1998? Well, I was heading home. I took 17, and when I got into Walterboro, I just, I don't know, I just felt like I was on autopilot. And I got on 95 South and just headed south. 
Where were you going? I don't know. I had no plans, nothing. I, I don't know, I was just feel like I was on autopilot. Just, I was depressed. I was extremely just depressed and... Why? Because my life was out of control. Um, I was lost everything. You know, well, I didn't, at the time, didn't lose the baby, but I lost the boys. And my life was just out of control. You know, and I didn't, like I said, I didn't know that I lost the baby. So it was just, you know, I was just depressed because I'm like, why is my life like this, you know? And my family didn't know what was going on. I didn't let them in. I kind of kept my distance from them and uh, because they were used to me always being that smiley person and, you know, always trying to put my best foot forward. I just did not want them to know this nightmare I was living. You know, I, I left one marriage and I don't know, I guess my heart was still trying to heal from that. And um, just felt like I was in mourning. And then to get into the relationship with Mr. Manigo, you know, I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. This is going to be better, you know. And it just, right after that, it was just, it was just too much. And the, the baby that you're pregnant with in 1990, 1998, had you done any planning for that child's arrival? Yes, I did. What type of planning? Well, um, painted the room. We had a, a third room in the house and um, painted the room. And my parents bought a crib and um, they gave me a baby shower. Where was that baby shower? Uh, it was at my parents' house. And by July 10th, 1998, you had in fact lost that baby. Yes, ma'am. And so you were leaving work from Charleston mm -hmm. to go back home to Walterboro? Well, I'll go back to Ruff, and I was staying in Ruff. And, and somehow you got on 95, you said? That's correct, okay. 95 South. And they asked you where you were going? I have no clue. I had no plans. I was not, had nothing packed or anything. You didn't have anything in the vehicle with you? Uh, just a baby car seat. And what was that from? That was from the baby shower. What time of day or night was that when you got on 95? I want to say it was, it was still daylight. Yeah, it was still daylight. And what were you thinking about during your drive? I really couldn't tell you, but it, it couldn't have been good. I, I just really couldn't tell you. It just... I don't know. I don't know what was going on. Um, Did they, you ultimately get off of an exit on 95? Yes. Do you know where that was? Here in Jacksonville. What, what was your intent at that time? It was definitely not to take a baby. That's for sure. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I mean, it was almost... 20, 20, 20 years ago. I, I can't tell you. I, I really just cannot tell you what was on my mind. My head back then, I was a different person. My head was in a different place. I, I was, I was just broken. I had a broken heart. I had a broken spirit. I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel good about anything. You know, I was just felt like a robot. I knew. Shannara Mobley's room? Yes. Why is that? I don't know. I, I didn't know Shannara. I, I didn't know anybody. And I didn't know what she had or anything. And I didn't know who room I, I didn't even know who room I was entering in. It, I knew it was a woman, but I didn't know whose. 
Did you speak to Mrs. Mobley, Ms. Yeah. Mobley at that time? Yes, I did. Was the baby in the room when you first entered? No. How long were you in Mrs. Mobley's room? Her and I, we, we talked. Um, she wanted to get cleaned up and um, I guess the nurse was taking too long. So I went down the hall and got her a gown, a fresh gown. And, um, and I came back and kind of helped her. And we talked, she talked about the family, about her family. And um, that's it. Was anyone else in the room with her at that time? No. Did they ultimately bring a baby girl in? Yes, they did. What was going through your mind during that time? I don't know. I don't know. I just... I was thinking about, you know, maybe this baby can help Charles. That's what I was thinking. And after me and Miss Mobley was talking, it was like, uh, she was so young and she was just, wasn't real sure about what she was gonna do. And just my mindset at that time wasn't logical. It definitely wasn't logical. You know, but from what I was thinking at that time, it seemed right. It seemed right. And did you ultimately take that baby girl out of the hospital? Yes, I did. Where did you take her? To South Carolina. Did you change her name? Yes, I did. What did you change it to? Alexis Kelly. Did you ever change her birth date? No. What was it like to raise her? Alexis was a was a doll baby. She was a joy. What did it mean to you to bring a baby girl home? Well. I was, I don't know, my mind was just, my mind was gone. It really was. I just thought, you know, this would bring peace, peace to, to the house. You know, the abuse would stop, the violence would stop. And it didn't. Did you ultimately um, leave Mr. Manigo? Yeah, I did. Um, after I lost the boys. And um, it was just me and Alexis and him. And, you know, he was so happy that we were a family. I was like, we're not a family because I got two people missing. And, um, you know, like I said, I thought it would bring peace to the family. It didn't. And um, I just thought to myself, I can't have him around her. I can't do it. And she deserves better. And that's when I had enough courage to leave the relationship then. But like I said, by this time I had lost everything. And when you brought Kamaya Mobley back to South Carolina, did you raise her as your own? Yes, I did. How did you raise her? I'm not sure about that question. Can you? Okay. Um, did you get her medical treatment? Yes, I did. Did she have regular dental checkups? Yes, she did. Was she in dances and recitals? Yes, she she did dance for a while. Mm -hmm. Was she also a cheerleader? Yes, yeah, she was a cheerleader. What was expected of Alexis growing up? To be a respectful person and respect your elders. 
to to treat people in a kind manner. Um, she had rules to live by. And she wasn't, you know, she was a princess, but she still had rules. She was had she to. Was she required to go to school? Uh, Ma'am? Was she required to go to school? Of course, yes. Did she have duties around the house? Yes, she did. Um, well, when all of them, her and the, the boys were there, they had chores of washing the dishes, um, um, cleaning their rooms, keeping their rooms clean, making sure homework, definitely making sure homework was done. Was she also involved in the community? <clears throat> yes, she was. What's the Mary B. Thomas girls? Uh, the Mary B. Thomas girls is an affiliate of the uh, Order of Eastern Stars, um, where we teach young women, uh, young girls, how to to be young women and how to be independent and to, you know, move on to do things in the community that, you know, that strengthen women. Was she also involved in the church? Yes. My, and the children there, I, she was, she must have been about nine or 10. And uh, the organization just was just awesome. Um, I never met so many kids that were so focused on what they wanted to be. I think her roommate at the time was a little girl from Tennessee named Katie. And Katie was this little country, sweet little country belle. And she said, I want to be a neurosurgeon. And I was like, a neurosurgeon? <laughs> so, you know, Alexa told her, I want to be a pediatrician. I was like, wow, I just don't remember at that age wanting to, you know, already have my life planned out. So. I was happy that she was able to put, participate with that. You know, it, I encouraged her to do it because I think ever since she was four years old, she'd been wanting to be a doctor.